AI technology is advancing faster than anyone could have predicted. And maybe we're only a couple of big steps away from reaching something that looks more like general intelligence. It's just a question of when, but it's not more than five years, that's for sure. As much as 40% of jobs are at risk, and the people who don't react are at serious danger of being left behind. A new study out today predicting almost half of all global jobs could be affected by artificial intelligence. So what should you actually prioritize in order to remain relevant in this new world? We're moving into a period when, for the first time ever, we may have things more intelligent than us. And then I think the question is what happens from here? Really, is there anything that AI can't do? When somebody brings up a skill that AI can't do somebody else will say that's not true you know maybe in 10 years it'll be able to do that but i have one that i challenge people to to tell me like if that's going to be ever possible which is oh yeah boys and girls citizens of the world this is ethan from real life english where every single week it is our mission to take you beyond the classroom to speak english confidently and naturally to connect to the world, and of course, to use your English as the doorway to living your greatest life. So Izzy, the other day, Justin was sharing with me about this whole topic of artificial general intelligence and how before ChatGPT, they actually believed that it was like 50 years out, meaning that it was still 50 years before we would have this sort of technology. But since ChatGPT in the last couple of years that we've just had one advancement on top of the next, they've been lowering this like every few months they're they're lowering their this prediction. So now it's currently for twenty thirty, which is now six years away, right? But they're even saying based on the errors that they've had so far in in this prediction that it could be as soon as twenty twenty six, two years away from now. And people might not be so aware what artificial general intelligence is. So I thought it might be appropriate for us to jump over to some artificial intelligence, to Gemini, uh, Google's artificial intelligence chat, and ask it the definition. What do you think? Let's do it. Can you define artificial general intelligence in a way that is easy for an intermediate English learner to understand? So artificial general intelligence, or AGI for short, is basically super smart AI, artificial intelligence. So, and unlike most AI we have today, which can only do one specific thing really well, AGI would be like a really intelligent person. Imagine an AI that can learn anything a human can, solve problems on its own, and even come up with new ideas. That's the kind of intelligence AGI is supposed to have. And it's important to know that AGI doesn't actually exist yet. It is something scientists are still working on. As Ethan said, they're now, pre now predicting that maybe like six years from now, we'll already have this sort of technology available. Or much earlier. Or much earlier. So we thought it would be really nice because a lot of people nowadays, they're starting to be afraid for their job or they're starting to ask themselves, what does my job, what's my future look like with all this new technology that's arising? So... We wanted to actually dive into this topic about what should you be prioritizing learning to remain relevant in a world where we have this AGI technology. And one thing I asked myself too is of the skills that one must prioritize learning, is there something that if we start now, will there be a hole you know, in the job market, for example, a need for, mm -hmm. for that specific skills, that's something that we can start focusing on right now. Yeah, I think there's a really nice place to start. I was actually talking with Jordi about this before. It's a nice way to prepare for these conversations is by talking to someone else about it first. And because he's been working on a project the last couple of months in his company where he's working with Copilot and training people to use Copilot, which is Microsoft's uh, in their package that they have for corporations. It's their equivalent to ChatGPT or to Gemini. And he was saying that the, I think he's quoting someone else, but that, you know, you shouldn't be afraid that AI is going to take your job. Rather, you should be afraid of the people who know more about AI than you taking your job. And I thought that this was really a perfect way to sum it up because even a lot of experts are saying that although AI, it's really going to change the job market, it's not necessarily going to reduce so much the amount of jobs there are. So I was 
looking into this and Bill Gates, Eric Schmidt, who's the ex CEO of Google, believe that it's actually going to create more jobs than it replaces. We don't know yet what those jobs will be, but I'm sort of going off on a tangent here. And that is to say that one of the top skills I think is actually adopting a curiosity for all these technologies, all these tools that are coming about with artificial intelligence, because there's new ones every single day. If you're just interested about that, if you're starting to learn this, if you're starting to see how you could apply it to whatever industry or area you're working in, it's going to help to give you a leg up or to put you ahead of other people in your field who might not be so interested in this or who might not be being so proactive in discovering about it, right? It's almost like this new person is about to join your company, like this new employee, which is AI, <laughs> and learning how to interact with it, learning how to manage it even, right, or how to operate it is going to be essential. I was actually thinking of another perspective, you know, for this answer of like what skills you can develop. But actually, I think this would be a first. Like if you if you're seeing AI as, as competition, you got to learn about competition. If you're seeing AI as an opportunity, well, learn about this opportunity. But it is going to be present uh, really soon. So as like this employee, you know, in your company who is doing stuff, mm. so learn about it. It is going to be maybe a buddy of yours, right? A friend, or maybe an enemy, <laughs> a foe, but. <laughs> We don't know, so better learn about it right now. The bane of your existence. <laughs> yeah. One thing is just to do a Google search, or you could even ask Gemini or Chat GPT what sort of applications there are for your area. So maybe if you're working in healthcare, you might ask what sorts of things are already existing that are helping people in healthcare and start to explore these things to see what exists and being curious. Or even just trying things that are fun. Like we were a couple of weeks ago. Several people in our company were playing around with this tool. I believe it was called Suno. I don't know if you remember that mm -hmm. you can, these same tools where you can put in a prompt. A prompt is a slice of text, a piece of text telling it what to do or what to answer. And it will create a song. So you can say, create you know, a song in a rock song, for example. You say the genre about... I did one about my uh, dog Phoebe. So <laughs> I created like an anthem for, for Phoebe. I think it was called like P Phoebe's, Phoebe's Paradise. <laughs> and I also remember that Justin, uh, our CEO, uh, Real Life, he also created this version, this song using Suno about Real Life English. Take me to the land of endless words and open doors, open doors. There's a real life English that's for sure. It's for sure. So, so many of these tools are just amazing. Like playing around too with, if you're a designer with Midjourney or probably anyone who's listening to this who is a designer has at least tried out Midjourney, Dolly, these other tools for design. But I think that these things are coming about all the time for different sorts of meanings. Uh, back in October, I went on a trip with my parents to the Canary Islands and I actually used ChatGPT to come up with an itinerary for our trip of things kind of telling it, okay, these are the things that we're interested in. Uh, we're going to have a car and so on. And what would be a good itinerary for this many days, making sure also we have some time just to relax at the beach or at our Airbnb. It did like a really spot on job. We ended up having a great trip. And I think it's evolved, like ChatGPT has evolved quite fast, as you were saying before. Mm -hmm. And now it's able to be even more accurate and more creative uh, with the ideas it gives you. As I was saying, I think uh, if you see it as this metaphor of AI being a person or ChatGPT being a person. Right now, it's sort of like young, so it's developing. But it is here, and companies will want to hire it. So it is here, it's, it's developing, so get to know it. And you can get to know it by trying things, right? By simply, you don't need, you don't need to learn it theoretically. You can actually learn it by practicing. You can, you can use these tools. And I think that's actually the best way to get to know it first. Uh, same way, like, probably if you want to get to know somebody, you better go talk to that person instead of, like, hearing, it from, hearing about it from somebody else. And this made me think that maybe another metaphor is when we started having more globalization, a lot of jobs were being outsourced to other countries. It's almost like there's going to be a wave of outsourcing, but instead of it being to people in other countries, it's going to be a lot of jobs being outsourced to AI. Uh, one number I saw is as much as 40% of jobs could be affected or outsourced by this AGI. Yeah, people are kind of freaking out about that. Uh, they're getting really scared about it. But uh, I think if you look back... 30 years ago, maybe a high percentage of jobs, a large number of jobs that exist today didn't exist back then. 
So this isn't new, right? And it's a cycle. It continues. That's true. Continues to happen. So you just got to look look back and and understand like how is the future going to look like, or how's the future going to look, and like how can you take advantage of the opportunities? I actually see not just the opportunity of learning about AI, but there is the things that AI can't do. This is dangerous territory, I'd say, because like normally when somebody brings up a skill that AI can't do, somebody else will say. That's not true. You know, maybe in 10 years, it'll be able to do that. But I have one that mm-hmm. I challenge people to, to tell me, like, if that's going to be ever possible, which is you, like, as a person, it's really hard to identify with AI, like, to relate to it, to see it as somebody who is just like you, like an imperfect person, you know, who is like, developing. So you can't, for example, look up to an AI. By the way, like, what, is, what does it mean to look up to somebody, Ethan? Yeah, when you say it, to look up to somebody, so it could be literally like looking up because they're taller than you, but generally we'll use this figuratively uh, to say that you admire that person. So like, normally we admire people who are like us. This is that there's like whole psychology about it. Many frameworks actually make use of uh, this thing about relating relationships and how we relate to things, to people. And the more we, we, we feel like we're the same, uh, the more we relate to them well, literally, and it, this is important because we can inspire people, we can teach people through example, we can actually effectively teach because of this. And it is something that is underestimated these days because it's been the status quo. Like uh, we haven't had machines actually act like people to actually notice, mm. wait, it's not as effective in teaching because you know there is this dissonance, you know, in my my thinking here like it's not i can't learn from it i know i I don't i don't get the lessons so much because it doesn't go through the problems that i go through in the morning for example or you know Mm -hmm. to get to work it doesn't it doesn't suffer from the same pains yeah until it can pass the i believe it's called the turing test that it will be able to fool us that it's a person i don't know if you've seen this movie just on a tangent her because it's something that was made, a movie that was made with Scarlett Johansson and Joaquin Phoenix. It's a really great movie, but it hits really differently now because it, it was created before we had any sort of artificial intelligence in our day-to-day life. Now when you watch it, it just like, it feels, it hits really close to home, meaning that it seems familiar with what we're starting to go through now. Yeah, it's like sci-fi, science fiction, it's like science reality. <laughs> fiction so much i recommend people watch that or even re-watch that if you watched it when it first came out because it's a little bit unsettling you used that word before unsettling in the sense that it makes you feel a bit uncomfortable so just a quick interruption and we'll get back to today's podcast so guys we are completely committed to making these podcast lessons better and better for you but i really need your help to make that a reality So I have a short survey. It should just take you about 10 minutes to fill out. And with this, we're really looking for your honest feedback. We want to know truly what you think about these lessons, what is useful for you in these lessons, and what we can do better, what we're not providing for you with these lessons, or even what makes you bored in general when you listen to them. All right, so we would truly appreciate it if you take just 10 minutes to fill that out. It's linked in the description. And again, let us know what you truly think about these lessons and how we can make them the best English lessons in the world for you. But one of the skills here that uh, people, it's one of the things that you're kind of saying is emotional intelligence. So this whole thing of it being able to make you feel what a person would make you feel. So I thought of a couple of examples of this. So one might be in sales. So I believe AI will be able to be trained to be in sales, but I think the people who are really great at sales now, I don't feel like they're going to be out of a job. They're going to be replaced by AI because they have just this really high emotional intelligence. People are delighted to work with them. People are delighted to be their client. Mm -hmm. And the other example I thought of was in healthcare. So they're talking about there's going to be a lot of AI in medicine and even as so far as performing surgeries and so on. And this might solve a lot of problems because in the end, doctors are are humans. There's a lot of issues with them working schedules that are really unhealthy and don't lead to them having a really clear mind to be able to do these really sensitive operations and so on. And so it it can lead to malpractice suits. A lot of there's a lot of money in this and so on that in general 
when we were able to have a this AGI, it might be able to replace that with less of the risks. And maybe the doctors will still exist, but in a different capacity. Mm -hmm. But what I thought about was the nurses. So I had a surgery last year, and I think why oh, it couldn't be replaced were the nurses that were really good at making you feel comfortable when you're in this situation where you're extremely uncomfortable like you are after having had a surgery. And that's something that AI maybe is going to get there someday, but I think that's going to take a lot longer for it to be able to make us feel this sort of this comfort that's being taken care of. So I think we started talking about learning about AI as the first point. I think second point is the things that AI can't do or can't do yet or that it'll take mm -hmm. longer. So emotional intelligence is one, and that's a skill that people can actually focus on developing, right? And I think what I was just started to say is like a communication, like self-expression, because it's not just the skills, like mm -hmm. learning when you learn more about yourself and that you're able to share your own stories, share your own ideas, learn how to put into words like your own ideas, that is pretty unique and it won't ever go away. Like maybe a machine will learn how to give better ideas, supposedly better ideas, but uh, if you you still have your own ideas and sharing those will always be important in some context. So like learning that will, I believe will always be something of value. Similarly to that is creativity, innovation. These are things that, again, like AI might be a helpful tool for, but it's going to be difficult to replace the people who, for example, from ad agencies, the people who are really renowned, really well known for being immensely innovative. That actually makes me think that this is going to be important, not just for people uh, individually, but for companies too, like businesses that focus on creating connections and helping people develop their strengths because suddenly strengths will change. Like a, uh, right now, if you, uh, if a certain strength of yours will be actually fulfilled, you know, by AI, something that, uh, in your job, you're really good at doing, but AI will do, AI will do better. That suddenly won't be so much of a strength. I think discovering those strengths that are purely human and focusing on those, like if you, if you're looking to start a company, even like think about this too, like what are the things that we're going to continue missing? So another area that it doesn't relate so much to, it's not related to AI. It's actually just about technology in general that I think we must develop right now, immediately start developing ourselves in is self-management because technology usually makes our lives easier. And as it does that, I think we become complacent and we also become maybe even addicted to certain, you know, habits, like to doing certain things that are not healthy. And uh, it puts us in a really difficult situation when we're confronted with like the reality of AI, for example, because we're, if we're not efficient, you know, as workers and we're getting more and more addicted to say, for example, to uh, using our smartphones for everything, I think that's going to diminish, reduce our capacity to think critically, for example, right? Or to communicate effectively, as we were talking about. So managing ourselves, how we use these technologies and how seeing how it, it affects our general capacity, you know, at work, uh, at home, you know, in our relationships, I think that matters too. So that's another area of knowledge that the more you focus on right now, like uh, being just an excellent human being, learning what that is and like learning about yourself, that's going to be more and more valuable. That makes so much sense. This is already happening, right? People have become lazy using these tools like ChatGPT, Gemini to do their work for them, but it's just making them do mediocre work. So it's ultimately, you have to see this as a tool to help you do your job better, but not to do your job for you. You need to apply your your humanness and your unique creativity or your unique point of view on the world to do your best work. So just one example might be, say you're in marketing. This is something Izzy and I both do a lot is you might have to write a certain marketing campaign and ChatGPT can actually do a pretty good job of this. But if you were to just rely on that to do it for you and then not to layer on top of that things about the brand that you're promoting relating to your audience in a way that's really personal, it can't do that for you. So you would end up probably just sending out something that was really mediocre. And ultimately, if you're working for or with other people, they're not going to see you as someone who's really exceptional, really an A player. Yeah, it affects at your job 
And I think it's already affecting people uh, on a personal level. If you if you see what's happening, there's this like psychological crisis going on with especially teenagers, teenagers, I guess. And here at Real Life, we have guiding values, you know, that helps us individually as a team to, you know, how to go about our day, how to co collaborate, how to work together. And one of our values is to bring your best self. And we have a description for it that I think can really help. Like it can help others, not just like a people who work here, but it can really be helpful how to deal with self-management. So part of the description here, it says that we bring our best selves to life by building work-life synergy, which is to prioritize fundamental habits that synergize our health and effectiveness with every facet of who we are, from our energy to our loved ones to our work. So that's part of the description of this value. And one of the keywords here, one of the key terms is like fundamental habits because it's those habits that you don't negotiate. You don't think like, oh, maybe I'm not going to do this today. You know, it's those things that regardless of what happens, like you do those things. And I think technology, the way we interact with technology, a lot of times uh, interfere with our energy, our energy levels, just our day in general, like our routines. And suddenly, for example, if you think of sleep, we used to sleep much better. I think that before smartphones, it was much easier for me to have, have a lifestyle where I would sleep just like eight hours a day and it wasn't a challenge. But these days it is a challenge, it's difficult. Something so natural, the, the most mundane, simple of all habits, which is sleeping, suddenly is difficult to do. I just wanted to segue because I think this leads really well to the last skill that I took note of, which is continuous learning which of course is something that AI can do, but I think that it's going to be what sets apart the people who are able to leverage AI as a tool and to better their position ultimately in their career or in their life and the people who are going to be left behind who will become uh, irrelevant. And this would be true, I think, even if we didn't have AI because being a lifelong learner, and you brought up our values, so it isn't directly a value, but we say a lot here that when you stop learning, you start dying because we just see learning as being such a fundamental part of our lives. As humans, we really are wired to seek for growth, to seek for new experiences, to seek for expanding beyond our comfort zone. Those that are just resting on their laurels, which is a lot of people already nowadays, that they finish university, for example, and after that, they don't want to touch another book. They don't want to take any courses. They just go on the experience that they had from what they learned in university and then what they're learning on the job. But I think ultimately to be successful in anything and especially to remain relevant in a world where we have this, we're competing with even this artificial general intelligence, even if a lot of jobs are going away and what I was saying earlier that a lot of these leaders in AI are saying that they believe a lot of new jobs are going to come about because of AI. The people who are going to get those are these lifelong learners, these people who are curious, these people who are playing around with the new technology that's coming, it's people who are taking an interest in what this new world is going to look like and being a part of that new world. So ultimately, I think a really good place to start is having a daily reading habit or a daily learning habit. If you're someone who really has a difficult time reading, then maybe you could start with video courses or audiobooks or other podcasts. Things like else that's going to stand out a lot is people who have sort of that wide knowledge, like they're able to connect dots between many different fields. The more you read, the more you learn, uh, the more you're able to connect the dots. And those connections, I think if you see new technologies and solutions that are created, it's usually because people are connecting two or more dots. And I'd say about what you're referring to right now, like having this learning habit cultivating continuous learning, I think growth mindset is important. Like that, the concept of growth mindset, which is more like a mindset, is like a way you view the world and you view yourself. So if you understand more about growth mindset and how it puts you, it always puts you in a good position to face problems and situations, including this one. Like that is something I would say, like do that first, learn about growth mindset. But how would you define a fixed mindset, Ethan, versus a growth mindset? And I would say about this that you don't just have a 
growth mindset or a fixed mindset. Generally, all of us have growth mindset with certain things and fixed mindset with other things. And when you have a fixed mindset, in general, you tell yourself that, you know, I'm just not talented at that. It just wasn't born with the skills or it's not that important anyway. So the things you tell yourself, and I think this makes it easier to understand the things you tell yourself if you have a growth mindset is, oh, I just don't know that thing yet, or I'm just not good enough yet, or I just have to learn a little bit more. It's with a certain topic, how much you believe that you have the capacity to improve at that topic, to learn about that topic and to grow versus how much you think that, or you even dismiss any sort of growth in that field. Yeah, maybe because right now you have a great job and you're like, I will never be replaced. Also, if you have a fixed mindset, while things are good for you, that's also a problem because you won't see it coming. Like uh, you, you might be replaced and that could happen because you are not open for, for learning and you're not curious. And most importantly, I think humble. That's another, humility would be another important value here to cultivate. And I think that's a really good place for us to transition into today's game. So we don't go too long today, Izzy. But just in a nutshell, some of the skills that we talked about for people to reflect on again and to start being curious about how they can acquire these skills or these habits. I believe we talked about emotional intelligence, how you relate to other people. Also, self-expression. So there's both like learning about yourself, who you are, like what is really that, what is your message to the world and expressing that message, the communication skills, because no one's going to do it for you. Mm -hmm. For you, AI is not going to do it for you either. And you brought up self-management, which I think is very related to, to bring your best self, being a lifelong learner, being proactive also that we talked about a lot. So not just waiting for someone else to do it for you, not just waiting for something to happen, but actually finding these opportunities. And creativity, innovation, we talked about, expanding that. Coming back to like the very first thing that we start out with is just being curious about these tools that are coming about because there's new AI tools every single day. So just going onto Google and researching a bit about what sort of tools are existing already in your field and playing around with them. And dear viewer, dear listener, we've used a lot of advanced vocabulary today. We didn't define all of it. So if you want to get all the vocabulary and expressions that we use today and never forget them, then you should definitely check out the Real Life English app. You can get vocabulary flashcards over there so that you can practice these, add them to your active vocabulary, and next time you get in a conversation, you won't freeze up and forget those new words that you just learned. And furthermore, we've just added some new features that you guys have been asking for. For example, we now have reminders that you can set up and you can basically get a notification for the time of day that you want to study each day, which is going to help you a lot to build the habit because consistency really is key for success. And that said, let's jump into today's game. Oh yeah. So we're going to try something new today. If you've been following the podcast for a while, then you know that usually we'll start off with a game, which we didn't today. We just jumped right into the main topic, but it's been a pretty heavy topic today. So we thought that it would be fun to end in a lighter way by playing a game now. The game we've chosen for you today is really great because you're going to learn some new vocabulary and structures for questions. And we would love your feedback about this. Did you find it fun? Did you feel like it was good for your learning? Did you just enjoy listening to it? Or not, would you prefer we just cut it out? You can let us know in the comments on YouTube. Izzy, you actually <laughs> shared this idea, but I stole your idea for today's game. We're going to play 20 questions. This is at least how it's called in the States. And it's often a favorite at parties, party game. A lot of times people will actually have a sticky note. So they'll write down a name on a sticky note and hand them out. And you have to put it on your forehead and basically ask questions about who you are. You're, you're the person that you have on your forehead. We're going to do it a little bit differently. So each of us will send a message to our producer, Chi, with the, the person that we want the other person to guess. And it can be someone who's dead or alive, someone who's real or fictional. And each of us has 20 questions to guess the other. And maybe just to make it more interesting, we can take turns. And we forgot to mention this, that it's yes or no questions, right? It always has to be able to be answered by yes and no. So now Chi is going to reveal who our characters, who the people that we chose for the other one to guess are. But Izzy and I won't actually hear it. So it's just for you guys to be in on the game. 
And if you're over on YouTube, you'll see who each of us is guessing. Easy chose Captain Jack Sparrow for Ethan. And Ethan chose Marilyn Monroe for Easy. Do you want to do the first question, Izzy? Okay, so am I a man? No, that's important, right? Am I a man? Yes. Am I fictional? No, you are real. Am I alive? In a way. In a way. <laughs> supposed to be a yes or no. Am I American? Yes. That is a good one. Am I fictional? <laughs> yes. Am I alive? No. Um, am I a cartoon character? No. Was I alive in the night in the twentieth century? Yes. I have to think. I have to th like always with the twentieth century. I'm a bit slow. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I'm not a cartoon. Not real. Am I a character from a book? No. Did I work in business? No. Am I from a TV series? No. Was I an artist? Uh, no. She says that you were an artist in his opinion. Okay, so sort of an artist. Am I from a movie? Yes. Now we're getting somewhere. Am I a woman? Yes. Was this movie made in our lifetime? Yes. Was this person famous for helping others? No. Was this character, was I played by an actor who is still alive? Yes. Did I work in show business, like TV, radio, that sort of stuff? Yes. Am I a superhero? No. Oh, you laughed there, though. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> sorts of hints. Is she an actress? Yeah, she, she was. I guess in Brazil, like we see act actors, actresses as artists. Yeah. That was my... That's why I didn't really think. But you asked if she was in show business. Yeah. Am I from a romantic movie? No, not a... Not a romantic movie. So, have I won an Oscar? Uh, let me look that up. I, I don't think so, but she's helping me out. No. <laughs> no Oscar no for you. No Oscar, okay. Uh, what's his name? Uh, am I Jack Dawson from Titanic? No. Is her hair black? No. Yeah. That's a nice question, though. Am I white? Yes. Am I blonde? Yes. I feel like I'm not, I'm not getting like close enough, though. Uh, am I from an action movie? Yes. Am I Jennifer Lawrence? No. Wow. She's she's alive. Ah, yeah. She, okay. I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah I forgot. <laughs> so I'm a dead American actress. I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask ChatGPT. Yeah, I mean, he don't know exactly. <laughs> Give me a list of white action movie characters. <laughs> okay. Was this movie made in the last ten years? Oh, I'll, I'll 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 help you out there. It's a franchise. I had to say it because yes. But franchise. but not the first movie. Yes and no. Not the first movie. Did she die or did, uh, did I did I die past my fifties? I don't think so. You were pretty young. Is the actor who played me American? He is American. Was I more famous for doing drama movies? I'm gonna say no. Um, am I played by Keanu Reeves? No. Was she also famous for working on TV? Not famous for TV. Uh, am I Jack Sparrow? Yes, you are. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> okay, now like, I guess like, let me just ask one more question. Uh, I'm not Carmen Miranda, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's very strange. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're not Carmen Miranda. Okay, I, I have no idea. I think you have two more. I, I still go? Okay. One more. Okay, so your last one. Yeah, because I used already one. Was I born after 1950? No. I don't know. Um, I give up. And T knows. He's super familiar with... Yeah. You are Marilyn Monroe. Right. Oh, man. She was an actress and a model, and she's saying, like, the happy birthday, Mr. President. You know, like, one of those... Like, everybody has, like, gaps... Like, uh, things yeah. are obvious to most people. I, I didn't and... think I would get it, but then it, it came to me. Because I think you quoted him even in the last podcast. I did, actually. Or you didn't quote him. <laughs> I mean, I... You're, you're sure to quote that's accredited to him, but that he didn't actually say. Exactly. Jack Sparrow. Which, uh, do you remember the quote? What that was? The problem isn't the problem. It's your relationship to the problem. Yeah, or it's your attitude about the problem. Your attitude towards the problem. Yeah. 
All right, so to wrap up today's podcast, let's jump into what we're digging. So I'll let you do the honors, Izzy. Recently, I got a TV. I didn't own a TV until like, I don't know, four weeks ago or something. And then I started like oh, wow. watching, yeah, like I, I would watch things on my computer. So I started to watch uh, or more things like uh, movies and series. But one thing that I've been watching, I already shared this with you and other people here at Real Life. But I continue to watch it, and it's like my favorite thing to watch like every day just to relax is these videos from the Bon Appetit channel. I'm really I'm revisiting like all of the videos that uh, I watched mm. like years ago, and there's like hundreds of them, and they all have like millions of views. One of the ones you shared the other day that was on this woman who does a series of she tries to make gourmet versions of. Like candy bars and things like that, right? So one of the ones you shared was the Kit Kat bar. I think it's because that one, for example, opens up this, this uh, what do they call that? A loop, like a, a question loop or a problem loop. I think it's called a problem loop maybe. Of how is she going to create this? Because she completely reverse engineers, completely takes apart the candy bar, tries to figure out what are the ingredients, tries to figure out how she can replicate that in their kitchen. It's really interesting just like watching that process. I think I watched half of that one just I was just like wanting to watch the intro, but I got hooked, and then I was like, okay, I need to, I need to go do other things. Yeah, because <laughs> like, you're following her problem solve it, and I think she's mm-hmm. done like dozens of those, like all sorts of foods. Like, um, it's a whole adventure every every new episode of that series. They're pretty long, like thirty minutes. It's a good way to practice your English without. We actually just did the episode on cooking last week, right? So, if you're into cooking and you're wanting to continue improving it, it's a really fun channel to do that with. Anyway, so what have you been up to recently? Oh, you've been digging. Yeah, I've been digging in this new podcast I discovered. It's actually an episode was recommended on Tim Ferriss's Five Bullet Friday. I don't know if you get that too. With Ryan Reynolds. I was going to say Ryan Gosling, but that's a different actor. Ryan Reynolds. The podcast is called Smart List Podcast. And it has these three hosts who are all actors. Jason Bateman, Sean Hayes, Hayes from Will and & Grace, and Will Arnett. Like all these guys, you've probably seen them in something or heard of them, but it's just really well done. These three guys, they're friends in real life, so they have this really great dynamic together, and they just interview, I think they're each like an hour-long uh, interview with all sorts of different actors, different people in Hollywood and so on, and it's, I'm not like someone who's really into gossip or you know celebrity rags or, or things like this, but I've been finding it really enjoyable when I'm when I just need something easy to listen to in the background, sometimes we'll listen to it at the gym or uh, on the weekend while I'm doing some cleaning and it's very entertaining. So I recommend people check it out. They've done a lot of episodes, so you can for sure find one with someone who you really like. Uh, I really have enjoyed the one with um, Selena Gomez was surprisingly, I watched it because I'd been watching Only Murders in the Building where she's one of the main actresses there and she's just super prolific like it's amazing i never never knew and i've listened to a lot of these so just go search for an art uh an artist or <laughs> an actor or someone that you like and check it out there's so much these days like that you you can find but uh i really i really think that the the stuff that's more authentic you know there's just people mm-hmm. just, like speaking their minds and um they're just having fun it's the best stuff to watch like after work and just to relax and it's exactly that it's they have this really real dynamic that you forget that they're hollywood celebrities you know it's not like an interview on the red carpet or something it's they're just sharing their real selves like i loved there was one with natalie portman she was talking about how she moved to paris and she said when she lived in the states like she wore sweatpants all the time but now that she lives in paris she it's like a faux pas it's like something you can't do in paris is ever go out in sweatpants and I just like loved thinking about this actress who usually we would see in these spectacular gowns and so on on the red carpet, but that she just loves her sweatpants, right? Like any normal person. Oh, uh, yeah. So thanks so much for joining us today, guys. Hopefully you've gotten something out of it. Hopefully you're getting ideas for how you can combat this oncoming wave of AI or maybe rather than combat it, surf it, surf the wave, <laughs> be a part of the revolution. Right, the tiger. Or the dragon. (laughs) Ride the tiger, ride the dragon. And we would really love to hear from you guys. So if there are any topics that you'd be really curious to learn English with, like we did cooking last week, we've been talking about AI today, 
Uh, then let us know down in the comments if you're on YouTube or shoot us an email at hello at reallifeglobal.com and we might just do that as our next lesson. And a free way for you to support us if you are enjoying these lessons is to leave us a five-star review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere else where you are listening to this. That really helps us to reach other people on those platforms. Or if you're on YouTube, uh, hit the subscribe button and the bell down below. Give this video a like because also on YouTube, that really helps us a lot and it costs you nothing. So we can make more great lessons, great content like this for you guys. And remember that no matter what divides us, that which unites us is far greater. One, two, three. Oh yeah. I hate cooking, but I like <laughs> eating. <laughs> oh yeah. So, you know, cooking for me has always been this really fantastic way to connect to the culture of any language I'm learning. So everywhere we go, I try a new one. And this one I discovered when we were in York which is this really beautiful town in the north of England. So let us take you on a culinary adventure around the world. We're going to explore six different recipes from five different countries, from UK sweet treats. British food also gets a bad rap, right? But their desserts are really good. And I used to be quite the sweet tooth. To the hearty flavors of Ukraine, 